Now I know from my classes that a lot of people want to paint their children and grandchildren. I know I wanted to paint mine or some other loved one. And uh, this is a picture that I took of my grandson, Eric. He is a beautiful man. He's all grown up now, but I love this picture of him. And I wanted to uh, draw it. I wanted to paint him kind of differently. And I saw, uh, I watched a couple of videos with Susan Lyon, and I highly recommend that you watch her videos on portrait drawing. So today I'm gonna to show you how I would draw Eric using two pencils. Now when I mean two pencils, hi Marianne, thanks for tuning in. I'm using these two pencils. Limited amount of supplies here. I'm using Sanguine Pencils by Conte. One is 618 and one is 610. We'll be mostly using the 610. I'm also using a kneaded eraser to pull out the highlights. I have a couple of blending stumps in different sizes, a paper towel for blending, and I do have this nifty little thing. It's a uh, Mono Zero eraser. It's got a teeny tiny eraser on the top for pulling out some highlights if we need it. Now, the paper we're gonna use, now here is uh, one of the sketches that I did. Hi, Veronica, thanks for joining us. This paper is uh, Reeves um, BFK printmaking paper in cream. It may, they make lots of colors. This is the cream paper. And as you can see, I started off with a sketch. So this is pretty simple. So if we go back to our original picture, some of you are just joining us. Hi, Kelly Carey. Uh, and we want to make a line drawing out of this, which you can do on the computer, or maybe you can just put tracing paper over it and draw your sketch, and then apply it to your paper. So we want a light sketch, and we're gonna start with that. Now, after I got the sketch done, I put the picture of Eric into my computer and turned it into a graphic to show me where the light values, the lightest values on his nose, and the darkest values, which are in his hair and in his eye socket, and then the middle tones are. And this will help us with our drawing. So this would be, I think, a simple way. If you wanna draw your grandchild, or your husband, your wife, your loved one, you could do this. So I have this to go by to make sure that my values are in the right range. So here's Eric again. Now what I did was, I started already. So here's my drawing so far. <clears throat> and yesterday I went ahead and sketched Eric out and I worked on this side of his face because I'm right-handed, <clears throat> excuse me, I wanna work from the left side to the right side of the paper and from the top to the bottom and keep my hand out of it. Now, uh, I don't think I mentioned the most important blending tool that we're gonna use, and that's a paper towel, a good old bounty. <clears throat> so I'm gonna start to work here, and I'm gonna use the Sanguine Pencil, the 610 Conte Pencil, and we're just going to look at the lights and the darks Hi, Tricia. <laughs> Thanks for joining us, Kelly, while you're at work. So I started on Eric, and you can see he has quite a dark shadow under his nose. So I started adding the shadow, and I stopped so I could finish it while you were watching. So there is some shadow on this side of the nose. So the way this works, this paper is awesome because it takes, I think, 
a lot of abuse without uh, buckling under to that. I remember when I worked in colored pencil, it was really hard. After a while, the um, paper just wouldn't take anymore. Add some of the little shadows in. Now I want to um, show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to gently, lightly, everything's done very lightly, and then we can add more layers as we go along. So I have this in. I'm going to take my boundy paper towel, and I'm going to start to blend it. And that blends. I can rub it pretty pretty hard without any problem. And that blends in that initial layer. So now I'm going to go back <clears throat> and add some more. So I'm going to darken this edge. I'm going to darken this edge. And the nostril. Always keeping in mind the values because it doesn't matter what color you paint something as long as your values are correct. Now you can get uh, a lot of free apps for your phone that uh, will allow you to convert your photos to black and white and to values. So I'm going to put another layer in, just gently making that darker. And then I'm going to blend it again with my paper towel. Believe it or not, paper towel does a better job of blending than the blending stump. Now I have a couple, and if you have small areas, you can certainly use the stump, but I really like the paper towel better. Now Eric's nostrils are quite dark, so I'm going to switch to my darker pencil to darken up the nostrils. And I'll go back to the Sanguine Pencil. I darken under his nose. Take this, the Sanguine 618, make this just a little darker. So that's really starting to look nice. Now, it's darker here, that little dip that comes above the lip. Now I want to blend everything again. And because it is smaller, I'm going to wad up my little paper towel a little smaller. I was really impressed by the fact that the um, color didn't get smeared all over the paper when you blend it. The surface is very nice. The paper is a little pricey, but I liked it a lot better than Canson paper. So let's darken up those nostrils just a bit. Now, 
Let's say we wanted to um, take out a little highlight just above the nostril area. Hi, Coon. Thank you for joining me. So I can take this and I can lift a little highlight there. And if I don't like it, I can blend it out. So let's work down a little further. Let's go down to the top of his lip. I'm honored to have the master of all pencil drawing, Kung Nguyen, with us today. If you don't know him, look him up. Go like his Patreon channel. He's the best. So again, cross hatching, using the tip of my pencil. I even used a razor to sharpen my pencil today. So I'm going to blend that in. And the shadow is a little darker. Eric has beautiful lips, they're very full lips, and there's a beautiful um, shadow. Oh, thank you, Carol. I love the, um, the angle of his face, too. We were... Um, in a waiting room and I asked him if I could take his picture and being the wonderful grandchild that he is he said sure and so he let me take his picture so let's go ahead and blend this a little bit Now there's a um, beautiful light that comes from the side of Eric's nose out, so I can lift that with my kneaded eraser. It's very easy to take color off this paper without damaging the paper. And then he has a beautiful light. Above the lip.
big light out there. There's also a little light on his lip. I love the fact that you can take this um, kneaded eraser and just really um, remove color and tease out what you want. The brightest light is down the center of his nose. But there are more subtle values also on the side of his nose. Okay, so let me get I'm going to switch to this darker sanguine. Hi, Mary Mariner. Thank you for joining us. So let's put in the shadow under the bottom lip. And let's also continue the shadow. Now see if at any point I'm not sure how dark this should be or how I should do that, I can go back to my original graphic that I did and check my values. It's kind of acts as a guide. The value of Eric's lower lip on one side is almost the same as underneath his mouth. with my bounty paper towel. I'm planning um, to do all of my grandchildren in this manner and uh, frame them and hang them all together. I think that would be very nice. Diane Rickardson. Um, okay, somebody wants to know what the two pencils are and the brands again, so I'm going to go over the supplies. Um, 
I will put it in the comments section. But what I'm using are two Conte pencils. One, uh, they're both Sanguine pencils. One is a 618. My main pencil is a 610. And the paper is Reeves BFK print paper in, uh, the color is cream. So, I think um, you can get all these things from Dick Blick. I uh, mentioned it before, but I'll mention it again. I tried this on Canson paper, but I was not as happy with the results as I was on the Reeves print paper. And do um, be aware that there are two sides to the paper, and that's true in most all of them. And I did do one on the wrong side. I want to go a little darker, so I'm going to switch to the other sanguine pencil. So if we slowly build up the values, this needs to be a little darker. As we go, it gives a better result. My kneaded eraser and get that highlight on Eric's lip. The highlight also goes out to the corner. And so you can see this is a really great way to make a great portrait. And we can keep working on our values until we get them just like we want. Um, I did one of the first ones I tried like this. I added a black pencil, but I really um, didn't like it as much. As with just a sanguine. Okay, so now I'm going to continue down his face.
take out this highlight on his chin. Because a kneaded eraser doesn't uh, damage the paper, if I need to go back and add more color, I can. If I want to take color off with a paper towel, it's fairly easy to do too. Now, if I want a brighter light, I've been experimenting with this little Tomboy pencil. There is a light that runs, I should say, that's not what it is. It's a Mono Zero, made by Tomboy, Tombo, the racer. Now, I want to point this out too. On my uh, drawing, you can see that Eric's eye in shadow is much darker than his eye on the left side of his face. In fact, I think um, it's just his eyeball really that is lighter. 
And so we have to keep that in mind when we, we draw this in. This whole side of his face is much darker. Now when I drew his left eye, I took the light out on the eyeball with my uh, little kneaded eraser. I took a light out right there because it was very um, attractive to do that. And because the eye is round, I mean, so we want to show that. Now it was really hard to see what was going on up in here because of all the hair. So I took other photos that I had of him. and use them to kind of help guide me as to what was going on up in this area. And then it gets super dark. Over here, it's also dark under his eye. I'm going to use this little tiny blender
Do you take creative license to lighten it slightly? Uh, I do. I put my photos into, uh, if I've taken a photo, the original photo of Eric was very dark. Let me see if I can find it for you and show you what I did. Here's the original photo, it's kind of small, but you can see it's very dark and you really can't see any detail. So I put it into my computer and uh, lightened it so I can see what's happening in here. And I just think it's wonderful. We have so many things available to us uh, that we can use to improve our drawing. I took uh, actually several photos of Eric that day I took the one this drawing is based on, and then the one I showed you was actually his head was turned a little bit more and it was very dark. And I lightened it up. Uh, but I think, I appreciate your questions, Mary, and I'm glad you find this inspiring. Thank you for stimulating the conversation. So I have something that I think is going to be, make a really terrific, um, finished painting of this. His neck, of course, is quite dark, and he has uh, all these wonderful curls. I'm not going to paint all of them, but I thought I would pull out a few and uh, emphasize those. And I can, you know, I, I'm, this is going to take a while to finish, but this is a good start. This is very dark there. The nostrils need to be darker. The shadows on the lips need to be a little bit darker. So it's got a ways to go, but I think it's going to be uh, pretty good when it's when it's done. Uh, that line is wrong, so I'm gonna take it out. But I'm gonna put the color back in. And then if you're drawing um, and you get stuck, turn it upside down. I think I mentioned that. But seriously, you turn it upside down and compare it with your um, reference photo and you can see what needs to be fixed. So I hope you'll give this a try and please let me know if you do. And if I can help you in any way, let me know. And if there's something else you'd like to see me demonstrate in a video or in a, you, in a Facebook Live, please let me know and enjoy the rest of your day and thank you for spending time with me. Bye-bye.